the Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. And now, in many states, you can buy this delicious Parquet Margarine in yellow quarter-pound sticks. Yes, the same spread that tastes so good now comes in handy quarter-pound sticks already colored a rich golden yellow and ready to serve. That's Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Well, let's see what's going on in the great Gildersleeve household this fine spring morning. The great man and his little family are just finishing breakfast when they hear the familiar sound of the mailman's whistle. Mailman! I'll get it! I'll get it for me! Oh, my goodness. How can one small boy make so much noise? Oh, it just comes natural to little Leroy. Uh, hey, uh, Leroy, it isn't necessary to shut... Oh, sh- I got a package, a big one, too. Package? Oh, yes, yes, I've been expecting that. Let me have it, my boy. What's in it, Unky? You'll see. It's something I sent away for. What is it, a reducing set? Yeah, Leroy? <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Gee, Unk, tell us what it is. Well, you'll just have to wait till I open it, my boy. <laughs> it's sort of a surprise. It is? Hmm? Gee, hurry up. There. What do you think of that, Leroy? Gosh, a detective set. Yeah? Look at all that stuff. <laughs> pair of handcuffs, fingerprint powder, disguises, yeah. and a book on crime detection. That's right. It's from the Eagle Eye Detective Institute. Do you like it, my boy? I sure do. Gee, thanks a lot, Unc. I've always wanted one of these. Well, uh, this isn't for you, Leroy. It's for me. What? <laughs> oh, Unc. Well, since I caught that bank robber a few weeks ago, I sort of got interested in this sort of thing. Just thought I might take up crime detection as a hobby. Oh, for corn's sake. (laughs) Well, I happened to see this detective course advertised in a magazine. Uncle Mort, how ridiculous can you get? Now, it isn't ridiculous at all. No harm in learning about these things. You never know. It might come in handy. How? Hmm? Well, who knows? Someday the police department might call on me to help solve some big case. Why, I might become known as the Great Gildersleuth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Gee, I thought the set was going to be for me. Uh, don't look so glum, Leroy. You can be a little detective, too. You can be my assistant. I can? Oh, boy. Sure. When a case comes up, we'll solve it together. Gee, I wish a burglar would break in our house. Then we can catch him, Monk. Uh, well, let's not rush things, my boy. <laughs> you children better run along to school now. Okay. Goodbye, Uncle Moore. Goodbye, my dear. Detectives. <laughs> See you later, Uncle. Yeah, goodbye, Leroy. Call me old cars! Call me old cars! <laughs> <laughs> Little Leroy. Well, I bet I'll have a lot of fun with this detective set. Certainly looks fascinating, all right. Wonder if Humphrey Bogart has one of these. Let's see now. Fingerprint powder. Sprinkle powder on surface. Blow away and fingerprints will be disclosed. Uh, That sounds easy. I'll try it on the table where Leroy was sitting. Should be plenty of fingerprints there. See, you just shake it out. You blow it. Well, it works. Look how plain they are. Are you still here, Mr. Gillsleeve? Yes, Bertie. What are you doing, Mr. Gilson? I'm just looking at these fingerprints on the table here. Oh. You see how plain they are? Yes, sir. Mr. Gilsleeve, I can't help it if people get fingerprints on things. I keep this house as clean as I can. Oh, I know that, Bertie. No, sir, I can't help a few finger- fingerprints. This house is keep- kept as clean as I can keep it. Yeah, but, Bertie, I was looking for fingerprints. Well, if you look for them, you'll find them, but I keep this house as clean as I can. <laughs> <laughs> now, Bertie, you don't understand. This is the way we investigate crime. Well, a few fingerprints ain't no crime. I keep this house as clean as I can. (laughs) But, Bertie, I'm just being a detective. It don't take no detective to find fingerprints around here. I can show you a lot of them. But I keep this house as clean as I can. (laughs) 
Mm. Guess I'd better pick up my fingerprint powder and blow. <laughs> <laughs> Peavy, have you any crimes you want solved? Okay. Uh, well, you haven't heard about it yet, but I'm taking up the study of scientific crime detection. Oh, is that so? Yep. <laughs> Got myself a lot of detective equipment, and I'm all ready for business. Well, in that case, you might be interested in something that happened this morning. Oh? What's that, Peavy? There was a big holdup down at the fire department. A holdup? Yes, the fire chief's pants were held up by a pair of suspenders. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Held up by a pair of suspenders, get it? Yes. Hmm. Peavy, you may think this is funny, but someday you might need my services. What? Well, just suppose your drugstore was robbed. Or suppose somebody kidnapped Mrs. Peavy. Kidnapped Mrs. Peavy? Yes. Do you know somebody who wants to kidnap <laughs> No, of course not. Oh. But just suppose somebody did take her away. You'd look for a detective, wouldn't you? No, I'd look for Miss Peavy. <laughs> but Peavy, I'm a detective. I could follow the clues. All right, you follow the clues and I'll follow Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> well, you can laugh at me if you want to, Peavy. But I bet the FBI would be crazy to have a detective like me. Well, now, I... Yes, they certainly would. <laughs> Marjorie? Yes, Uncle Mort, what is it now? Yeah, this book on crime detection is certainly interesting, all right. Yes, I know. You've been telling me that ever since dinner. I'm trying to do my homework. Oh, pardon me, of course. Go right ahead, my dear. Thank you. Marjorie? Yes, Uncle Mort? Write something on a piece of paper. What? I want to get a sample of your handwriting. What for? Well, there's a chapter here on analyzing personality through handwriting. Oh, for heaven's sake. Just write anything. Your name. Oh, all right. There. Thank you. Let's see here. Small letters crowded together, slant to the left. Hmm, that's funny. What's funny? According to this, you're 50 years old, a pickpocket, and you have a black mustache. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Must have got something wrong. Well, I hope so. Anki, I've got to get this homework done. I'm going upstairs. Good night, Mr. District Attorney. Uh, good night, Miss Miller. <laughs> uh, wish Leroy would get back from that weenie roast so I could try this out on him. Yes, sir, I'll bet this... I'll get it, Bertie. Well, good evening, Gilday. Uh, hello, Judge. Come in. Thank you. Well, Gilday, Peavy tells me you're a super sleuth now. Well... I must say, in that dressing gown, you do look like a famous detective. Oh? <laughs> Sherlock Holmes? No, the fat man. You... <laughs> Very funny, you old goat. Sit down. Now, Gilde, what is all this nonsense? It's no nonsense. I'm taking up the hobby of scientific crime detection, that's all. Oh? Well, I know a case you could work on right now, Gilday. You do? What's that? There was a murder committed in an automobile this morning right at 2nd and Main. A murder in an automobile? Yes, a fella choked his throttle and killed his motor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. Judge, with those old jokes, you and Peavy ought to go into television. Well, maybe we should. Oh. <laughs> oh, where are you? Right here, Leroy. Hello, Leroy. Hello, Judge. Unc. What's the matter, my boy? There's a ghost out there. What? Where? In that old house out by the mill pond. I heard it. Now, my boy, you probably just imagined it. No, I didn't. Piggy heard it, too. Us kids were coming home from the wiener roast, and we went by that haunted house, and... Leroy, there's no such thing as a haunted house. Well, this one is. I suppose you mean the old Willoughby house, Leroy. Yeah. We were just going by there. It was all dark and everything, and all of a sudden, the door opened, and we heard footsteps in there, like this. Well, maybe somebody's living there. Gilda, nobody has lived in that house for 20 years. Not since crazy old Henry Willoughby died there. Oh, yes. And then we heard a moan, like this. Oh, my goodness. 
A ghost? That's silly, Leroy. Well, there have been a lot of stories about that house, Gildy. Some people claim they've seen old Willoughby's ghost roaming through the place at night. It's easy to see how it might frighten some people. Well, it wouldn't frighten me. That's what I told the kids, Unc. I told them you were a detective and nothing could scare you. Why, of course. I told them you'd walk right in that whole haunted house any old time. Absolutely. I told them you'd go right out there tonight. Fuzzy. <laughs> tonight? Sure. Well, it might be better, Leroy, if I went out there in the daytime. You can see better then. <laughs> oh, Uncle, why don't you go now and I can go with you? Well, uh, you're not scared, are you, Gildy? A big detective like you? Why, of course not. Then why don't you go? All right, Hooker, I will. Oh, boy! But, Gildy, aren't you afraid to go out there? Why should I be? After looking at you all these years, a ghost would look good. <laughs> Gildy! Goodbye, you old ghost. I mean, old goat. <laughs> Come on, Leroy. There's the house, Unc. Yes, I see it. Well, shall we get out, Unc? Huh? Get out? Oh, yes, of course. dark out here at night. Yeah. House does look a little spooky, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I guess we ought to go a little closer. Yeah. <laughs> sure scary, isn't it? Huh? Well, it's a little dark and lonesome out here, but there's really nothing to be scared of. <laughs> Leroy, what was that? <laughs> Screech owl, Unc. Oh? Must have the hiccups. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there, Screechy. <laughs> Stay close to me, my boy. You're probably pretty frightened. All right. We'll have to go through this gate. Sounds like Judge Hooker clearing his throat. <laughs> Yes? This is where we heard the ghost. Huh? We were standing right where you're standing when it happened. Right where I'm standing? Yeah. Then all of a sudden the door opened. Then we heard those footsteps. Then that scary sound. You did? Well, Leroy, I've told you there's no such thing as a ghost. You just imagine the whole thing. Why, how could anything like it? Uh... Hunk! The door! It's opening! Yeah. <laughs> Steps. Mm. <laughs> a ghost. But then you said there weren't any ghosts. Well, after this, don't believe everything I say. Come on, Leroy, run. <laughs> Wall, this is some block we live in. How's that, Bertie? Well, practically every woman in this block is a good cook. Now, take Miss Simpson. No woman can broil steaks better than her. And Miss Salsa, her specialty is hot breads. Casserole dishes like baked shrimp is what Miss McKendry does best. That's the way it is up and down the whole block. Every one of them's a good cook. And every one of them uses parquet margarine as a spread and for cooking, too. Well, that's not surprising, Bertie. Parquet's so nutritious, and after Mr. all... Mr. Wall said the reason our block is a parquet block is because parquet margarine tastes so good. It's economical, too. Costs only about half as much as the most expensive spreads. That's right. But economy is as economy does, I say. And what that parquet margarine does is taste so good. Why, sure, parquet's made from the selected products of American farms. So I think that more and more women in every town in America are going to use parquet margarine. They like it because it's nutritious, because it's economical. But mostly, Mr. Wall, because it tastes so good. Right you are, Bertie. That's the plain truth about parquet, the delicious margarine made by Kraft. And remember, in many states, you can now buy parquet margarine in yellow quarter-pound sticks. (laughs) 
Last night, the great Gildersleeve set out to prove to Leroy that there's no such thing as a haunted house. But while he was out at the mysterious Willoughby place, a strange thing happened. First, the door opened. Then there were hollow footsteps. And then a weird, ghostly sound. What did the great man do? Well, he ran away. It's morning now. We find him telling Marjorie all about it. I tell you, Marjorie, I heard those sounds just as plain as anything. Oh, sure. Well, I did. And Leroy heard it, too. Uncle Mort, why don't you admit it? It was dark and scary out there, and you imagined those things. That's all. I did not. And then you ran away. My big, brave detective. <laughs> now, Marjorie. More coffee, Mr. Gillsleeve? Bertie, you believe me, don't you? What, Miss Gilsey? I did hear something out there last night. Yes, sir. There's something going on in that house. Yes, sir. I wouldn't get scared about nothing. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> What's the use? I tell you, Judge, there's something peculiar about that house. Oh, of course. Well, there is. I'm standing there, and then I heard this strange sound. Strange sound. It was probably your knees knocking together. It was not. Well, I know another place that's haunted, Gildy. Where's that? Your upper story. There's been nobody home there for years. <laughs> well, if it ain't the commission. Hello, Floyd. I want a haircut. Okay, hop right up in the chair. Uh, uh, uh. Well, Kamish, heard any strange noises lately? <laughs> okay, Floyd. Hey, Kamish. What? Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Floyd just cut my hair. Okay. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Floyd. <laughs> Only kidding, Kamish. You know, I don't blame you for running away last night. I'd have run, too. You would? Sure. Then you believe me, Floyd, huh? You think I did hear something out there? Sure. You don't think there's a ghost in that house, do you? No. Nope. Something worse than that. A dangerous criminal. A criminal? Yep. Probably a counterfeiter. What? Well, that's what those guys always do. Pick out some place like a haunted house so nobody will come near them. They do? Sure. I'll bet this fella's out there right now grinding out $10 bills. Yeah. Oh, well, could be. Sure, that's your big chance, Kamish. Hmm? Everybody's laughing at you now, but if you was to catch this guy, you'd be the Dick Tracy of Summerfield. Uh, Probably get a big reward, too. Maybe 500 bucks. 500? You think so? Sure. If I was you, I'd go out there and investigate tonight. By George Floyd, I'll do it. I'll show the judge and everybody who's afraid. Had a boy, Kamish. I'll be home rooting for you. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. And, Kamish. Yes? Uh, you might cut little Floydy Munson in on that reward. <laughs> well, we'll see, Floyd. I'll catch that counterfeiter if it kills me. Whoop, what am I saying? <laughs> I better go see the chief of police. Now, Commissioner, you don't know there's a counterfeiter out in that house. Well, Chief, there's somebody out there. What about those footsteps I heard? Now, Mr. Gildersleeve, those footsteps were probably just a rat running around. Well, if it was a rat, he was wearing shoes. <laughs> That's very funny. Ho, ho, ho. Yes, yes. Well, I'm going out after this fellow tonight, Chief. Are you coming with me or not? Well... Commissioner, I guess I shouldn't let you know. Now you're talking. This fellow might be a dangerous character, all right. Naturally. He's probably a killer. Well, I can't let you face a killer without any protection. That's well. Then you're going out with me? No, I'm going to give you a permit to carry a gun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, not at all, Commissioner. Sign right here. What a chief of police. <laughs> Well, I guess I'd better get out to that house. It's getting kind of late. Hope I can sneak downstairs without waking the family. Oh, better turn off the light. 
I'll tiptoe. Hi, Up! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Leroy. Where are you going? Out to the Willoughby house. What? That isn't a ghost out there, Leroy. It's a dangerous criminal, and I'm going to get him. Really? Gee, can I go out there with you? No, my boy. You go on back to bed. It's too risky. He's probably a killer. Gosh, you're sure brave, Unc. Well, some people don't think so, but I'm going to show them. Had a boy, Unc. Well, my boy, I'll be back in a little while. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> pretty soon, I'm afraid. Guess I'll have to go through with it now. Me and my big mouth. Wonder if that fellow is a killer. Well, I just won't think about it. Get some music on the radio. Cheer myself up. <laughs> well, Flatfoot, I caught you snooping around here, didn't I? Huh? Well, you made a big mistake coming out here. You're not getting out of this place alive. I'm gonna drill you so full of holes, you'll look like a piece of cheese. I hope it's craft. <laughs> well, big boy, here's a present for you. <laughs> Think I'll try another program. <laughs> too close to the house, and I'll sneak up on him. That's what it said in the book, chapter two. Well, come on, Gellersleeve, you wanted to be a detective. Wish the moon would come out. What's that? <laughs> My heart's pounding so loud, sounds like somebody's following me. <laughs> Isn't that silly? Somebody is following me. Wonder who it is. Nobody out here but me and the killer. The killer. He's after me. He's gaining on me. This is the end, Gillisleeve. Goodbye, Marjorie. Goodbye, Leroy. You can have my detective set. Hey, Commissioner. Yeah. Oh, Chief Gates. What are you doing out here? Well, Commissioner, I thought it over and decided it wasn't right to let you come out here all alone. Oh? After all, we're fellow jolly boys. Oh, thanks, Chief. I'm certainly glad you're here. Well, glad to be here. Well, Commissioner, let's get on with the manhunt. Manhunt? Oh, yes. Just stay right behind me. Good idea. Here's the gate. Shh. No. Mustn't let him hear us. He might take a shot at us. He... Oh, yes. Be careful going up these steps. I will. <laughs> Stumbled. in there, isn't it? Sure is. Well. Well. Guess we ought to go in. Yeah. Guess we should. The door's open. I'll tell you, Commissioner. You go in and I'll stay out here and be the lookout. Huh? <laughs> Why can't I be the lookout? Oh, no, no. That takes experience. You go in and flush him out. Flush him out? <laughs> That's right. And I'll leap on him when he when he runs out the door. Well, look before you leap. The fellow running out might be me. <laughs> okay. Go on in, Commissioner. Well, all right. Uh, stop pushing me. Oh, don't worry. I'll be right here. Oh, don't lock the door. Hmm. Dark. <laughs> Can't see a thing in here. <laughs> Killer's probably hiding someplace, ready to spring at me. I'll just feel around. Oop. Feels like a face. Chin. Big nose. Ears. Antlers. <laughs> Ooh. 
Hmm. A moose head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I guess he isn't in this room. Better try the hall. <laughs> Cobwebs. <laughs> Here's his floor. It wouldn't creak so loud. He's liable to be. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I'm getting out of here. No, I'm not. He's not going to scare me. I'll show him. Oh, brother. <laughs> Sounds like it's coming from that room there. There's a light under the door. I'll get my gun ready here. What did I do with that permit? <laughs> <laughs> Wish I could stop shaking. Well, I'll sneak up on him. Well, this is it, Gildersleeve. The killer's just outside this door. Courage now. I'll take him by surprise. Put up your hands. I've got you. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Phoebe! <laughs> Phoebe, what are you doing here? Oh, I come out here several nights a week to practice. Practice? Yes, I just bought this cello, and Mrs. Peavy won't let me play it in the house. Oh? Oh, brother, I don't blame her. <laughs> well, nobody can hear me way out here. Of course, I'm just a beginner. Oh, my goodness, and I thought you were a counterfeiter. How's that? Playing a cello in a place like this. Peavy, you're the biggest boob in Summerfield. <laughs> well, no, I wouldn't say that. Oh. <laughs> Come on in, Chief, and bring your harmonic. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Here's news. You can now get yellow parquet in all states where laws permit. Yes, parquet, the same delicious bread with a wonderful flavor, now comes in handy quarter-pound sticks already colored a rich golden yellow. You'll find yellow parquet costs a little more, largely because of the federal coloring tax, but it's a real saving for you in time and trouble. Try the new yellow parquet in quarter-pound sticks. Remember, where state laws permit, you can get this delicious spread, golden yellow, ready to serve. Of course, you can still buy white parquet at the low economy price. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. All right, fellas. Come on, jolly boys, let's sing it. Boys always. Pretty good on that cello. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> good night, folks. You like this pleasant, quick way of making leftovers more delicious. Just add a little craft prepared mustard and you add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors and boiled ham, sausage, most any meat, pop right out. Every bite tastes better. Now you can get two kinds of craft mustard. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor and craft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds in your pantry. Then with every meat dish, hot or cold, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Kraft's prepared mustard. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs> 